Hello, and welcome to the Zoo Family Portrait Block of the Month here at Dabble and Stitch. And we're really excited to help you all get started. So today we are going to discuss um, how I choose to foundation paper piece. When you start your project, one of the first pages that you're going to get is a hatching key. So all of your templates are going to be printed on these large pages and you're going to notice how the hatch color and the hatch uh, style changes between each fabric. So on this key, I suggest taking the time to cut out a small square of each fabric that you're going to use and that way you will know which fabrics you want for each color as you work your way through the quilt. When you go to start using your templates, you're going to have a bunch on each page. And what I like to do is use paper scissors to rough cut around each template. So I'm not cutting right on the line, I'm cutting a little outside of the line of each segment. And this will be an easy way to handle your pieces as you move along so you don't have a lot of extra paper to deal with. You're going to notice that when you foundation paper piece, you are using the printed side to stitch on, but your fabric will actually be placed on the blank side of the fabric, of the template. This is a segment that I've already completed. This is section A1, so that means that it is block A, segment one for your zoo quilt. And the first animal that we're making is the koala. So the printed side has all of the hatching. And once it's completed, it's the mirror image because we put the fabric on the blank side of the page. You're going to need a few tools to foundation paper piece. You want to have a rotary cutter and a ruler and then you have some options. I like to use the add a quarter plus ruler because it has a ridge that is a quarter inch and it also has a tapered side and you'll see where we use that in a minute because it has a, a nice sharp edge that we can fold the temp paper template on. If you don't have an add a quarter plus ruler, you can use a piece of cardstock or poster board to fold the paper template over and pair that with a regular ruler. You're gonna need a regular rotary cutting ruler anyway as you move through the project. You'll also wanna have an iron nearby and a good light source. Now, I usually use a lamp, but for purposes of this demo, you'll see that I will use this light box. When you go to put your segments together, you'll want pins and wonder clips. I also like to keep a bowl or tra small trash can on hand because you're going to be generating a lot of small scraps. Your sewing machine just needs to do a straight stitch and you'll want to be able to adjust the stitch length from a very small stitch to a very large stitch. Most of the time it'll be on the small stitch, but occasionally you'll want to be able to baste with it. When you go to start your paper piecing, you are going to use your template. And as you can see, when you look through the template on this light box, this is the upside down version. So we are going to cover section one first. Your numbers on the paper template indicate the order of fabric placement. So you just go one, two, three, etc., until you've completed the entire segment. When you look at segment one, we are going to need white fabric first. And when I prepare my fabric for foundation paper piecing, I tend to rough cut into strips first. And I found while I was making this quilt that two inch and four inch strips worked really well for almost all of the segments. 
Occasionally, if I had a lot of big pieces, I use six inch segments. So I'm going to start by taking the white fabric and I'm going to lay the white fabric down or I would hold it up to my light source if I'm using a lamp. And right now, I just want to make sure that all of segment one is covered with fabric. I'm going to pick this up and I'm not going to move it. I'm coming over to my cutting mat and I'm going to use this add a quarter plus ruler and I'm lining that sharp edge up on the line between segment one and segment two. I'm going to fold that back and I can adjust my placement a little bit because I want about a quarter of an inch here. I can also since I know I need at least a quarter of an inch here, I'm going to fold this back a little bit so I'm not wasting too much fabric, but cut the rest of that strip off because I'm not going to need it. You can always double check your placement to make sure that all of segment one is completely covered. With segment two folded back, and segment two, I'm gonna check our hatching, is going to be our medium violet. So I have another strip of that cut, and we're going to take it over to the cutting, to the light box. So when I place segment two, notice I have my template folded and you can see how segment two is what I need to cover while it's folded. That's very important that you are paying attention to where it interacts as a folded piece. Once I have my fabric placed, and I wanna make sure that I have at least a quarter of an inch on all sides, I can go over to my sewing machine And now I want to make sure that my stitch length is at about one and a half, which is a fairly small stitch. I normally would stitch on a stitch that is about two and a half. So you could base how small your uh, number will, setting will be on what you would normally sew with. Now I'm going to start at the beginning of the line. I try not to overshoot it too much into the seam allowance. And I'm going to take a couple of stitches and then I like to back stitch before moving forward. So I started at the beginning of the line, I'm stopping at the end of the line, and I back stitch in both places. I like to clip all of my threads as I go and use that trash bowl or else you're going to be covered in threads soon. And you're going to see that when it was sewn and the template's laying out flat, section two is not covered yet. However, when you fold this back into place, section two is completely covered. So don't worry that while you sew, it doesn't look like you're covering what the segment you want to. You always want to Give your fabric a good press in between. And I usually use a dry iron while I'm paper piecing until it is time to sew multiple segments together and then I'll use a little steam. So you can see that I have a lot of fabric hanging over the edge. So I'm just gonna do a rough cut and set that aside for the next piece. Right now, segments one and two are completely covered and we are ready to place the fabric on segment three. When you're ready for segment three and all of the subsequent segments, 
you're going to place your add a quarter plus ruler, or remember, you can use a piece of cardstock or poster board to help you fold. And you want that edge to be on that line between segments two and three. We are going to fold this back. And now we get to trim our seam allowances as we go. So the ridge, I flip the ruler over and that ridge catches the fold in the paper. And I can just use my rotary cutter to trim. So I've got a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Segment three is going to be dark violet. So I'm going to pick up my piece of dark violet fabric and head over to my light source. Remember that you don't need to have a white box. You can do this just by holding it up to a lamp. I'm placing my dark fabric here and I need to, while the template is folded, position that template over the fabric to make sure that segment three is completely covered and at least a quarter of an inch beyond all of segment three. So now I'm ready to take this over uh, to the sewing machine. Again, I'm using, I'm using a one and a half stitch length and I try to start as close to the beginning of the line as possible and I always back stitch before stitching forward and back stitch at the end of the line as well. And always make sure to get rid of all those excess threads. Now when you see it, again, segment th section three is not covered by the fabric as it's stitched, but when you flip it over into position that it'll be pressed into, section three is completely covered. So we're going to take it over and trim that now. Before I press, I'm just going to rough cut that line and you don't need to use a ruler as long as you're being really careful so you don't burn your, or cut yourself or burn yourself. I'm going to give this a press. And we're ready for section four. I'm taking the add a quarter plus ruler, placing it on the line between sections three and four, folding that paper template, then flipping the ruler over to use that ridge to trim the excess away. And a piece this size, you may actually find that you can reuse. So you will probably want to have a separate bowl or container to hold those scraps. Our next color is going to be light violet. I'm taking the light violet over to the light source. And you want to make sure that everything is going to be covered. And so this one's a little tighter, but that's fine. And right now you'll see I, to position this, I couldn't line it up straight with the edge, and that's fine. What we're going to do is take this over to the cutting surface and use that add a quarter plus again to trim that off before we stitch. So I'm just positioning the add a quarter plus, giving it a trim, getting rid of those scraps, and now it's time to stitch. So the most important thing to remember is that you have to trust your fabric placement and don't move it once you've unfolded it. Even if it doesn't feel like it looks right, it will work if it was covered while it was folded. I'm stitching on that line. I back stitch a couple of stitches at the beginning, stitch all the way across the line, and back stitch a couple of stitches at the end. And the tiny stitch is going to allow us to ultimately remove that paper more easily, and it makes it a sturdier piece. Once you have your piece of fabric pressed into position, uh, for longer pieces, I do usually go ahead and use a ruler, but I'm not trying to cut on any particular line. I just want to get rid of that excess fabric for now, and I'll set that aside. 
Now we're ready for segment five, which is going to be white fabric. The first thing I like to do is use my add a quarter or add an eighth plus ruler and place it on the line between segment five and previously stitched sections. Now on this one, since I'm using white fabric, sometimes you may have noticed that a darker fabric like this violet could cause what we call shadowing. So you might see a little bit of that hanging out. To reduce the likelihood of shadowing, I like to place my add an eighth ruler, maybe not quite an eighth of an inch away, but less than a quarter of an inch. So there's just a little bit of a gap there between the paper and the placement of the add an eighth. I go ahead and trim that off. So this is not quite a quarter. You would see if I place this. There's just a little bit less there. And that means that when I use this white fabric, I can take it over to the light source here again. And as I place the white fabric, I'm going to have a little bit extra. So the white fabric that we're about to add is at that quarter of an inch, but our seam allowance was trimmed just a little shy of that. And that's gonna help prevent shadowing of the darker fabric. As we're ready to stitch, all of segment five, plus at least a quarter of an inch all the way around was covered. I'm going to open up that paper template and stitch right on that line, back stitching at the beginning and at the end. And we're almost there, we only have one more segment. I'm taking this over to the iron. I'm gonna give that a press. And you'll see that all of segment five is covered with the fabric that we just placed. Now, one more time to the cutting board so that we can place segment six. So for segment six, we're gonna use that add a quarter or add a eighth plus. And since we're not worried about shadowing in this case, I'm using that add a quarter ruler. And I'm trimming off the fabric that we no longer need. And we just have to cover this segment with blue. Again, our blue fabric is placed here. And you might find that you wanna rotate your template around to find the best placement to use your, make the most of your fabric. I like this placement pretty well. And I'm lining up those edges. And all of segment six is covered by blue fabric plus at least a quarter of an inch. Once we're ready to stitch, we open up the fold in that template, and we're going to stitch on the line between sections five and six, using that short stitch and back stitching at the beginning and at the end of the line. We'll trim those threads and check our work by making sure that this entire section is covered once the fabric is folded into its final position. Over at the iron, we're gonna give this one final press before we trim all of our edges of our segment. You're going to see that there is a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the edge of your segments. and we're gonna trim directly on those black lines. And you'll just rotate around. And always remember that it is best to close your rotary blade every time you set it down. So anytime my rotary cutter is not in my hand, that blade is covered.
So there we go. We have section two completed. Now it's time to place sections one and two together. So here are your two segments and they're going to fit together like this and we'll be stitching on this line. To do this you're going to place your pieces right sides together and no matter how large or small the segments are, the first place you position are in the corners. So I like to take a straight pin and push it straight through the corner, and then I'm going to stick it straight through, and I might have to do it a few times. So straight through both the top and the bottom, and you wanna keep it as straight as possible. Then you're going to do the exact same thing on the other corner. So straight through the top. And then it might take a couple of tries, but straight through the bottom. And this should keep things pretty well aligned. This is the time that I like to pull out my uh, clover clips. and clip it in place. So the pins keep those points in place, the clips keep the fabric or the fabric segments from shifting one way or the other. So those cut edges should line up nicely with one another. So even if this was a much longer segment or a much shorter segment, I would always have these two points marked. Then I go to the halfway point Again, it wouldn't matter if it was a big segment or a little segment. And I want to make sure that that midway point is going through the line at the top and on the bottom. And this will go straight through. You're noticing I'm not pivoting the pins. That causes a shift in that paper. That works for fabric layers, but when you have paper involved, it's not as easy. And I place another clip. Then I would repeat the process of going to the halfway point as many times as I need to, to feel like this isn't going to shift on me. When we go to sew, some people prefer to first baste this line. I'm usually brave enough that I just go for it. Now we're ready. You do have to watch yourself because you've got all these pokey pins going straight through, but they won't be there for long. I go ahead and remove that first clip. And then I like to leave that pin in as long as I possibly can. And I go ahead and start stitching fairly close to the edge. And I back stitch again when I get to the place that the lines intersect. And then I sew straight through. So that back stitching is just at the beginning and the end of each seam. And I like to leave those pins in as long as possible. I usually get rid of the clip first, take a few more stitches before I get rid of the pin. And as long as you take your time, this usually goes reasonably well. Lose that last clip. And when I come to that final intersection, that corner where those lines come together, I backstitch and then I go ahead and stitch off the end. Clip those threads. And then you're going to check and see, and we're lucky, we're pretty much on that line all the way through, and that's ideal. I like to go ahead and after I sew two segments together, gently tear the paper off of just the seam allowance. I leave the main body covered in paper until the entire quilt is put together, and then I pull it off. But if you do the seam allowances as you go, you will find that it is much, much easier to remove the paper at the end. 
we're going to go ahead and give this a press and we're going to press our seam allowances open. And I don't have steam going in this iron right now, but I would typically use steam just a little bit, just a couple little puffs to really set this seam allowance so that it's pressed open and as flat as possible. And there you go. You have segments one and two connected and ready to be added to the rest of your block. Thanks for joining us.